So tonight we're testing out my new landing lights. And my homemade Vassy. My name is Rich. Despite a decent upbringing, I ended up a pilot. And slowly, aviation became my life. But just bouncing around between big airports got boring quickly. So now I use my plane to fly cool places, camp in the wilderness, and cook tasty meals. If that sounds good to you, we're probably going to get along. So the Zassi I made out of junk out of the dumpster. I took an old plastic tote, cut a hole in the side of it, put in a studio light with some red cellophane on it. Then I used my drone to calibrate it. And now we're doing the first test. This project started when I came across an old FAA video showing how Vassy lights were originally built. Watching it, I realized that if they could do this 50 years ago with relatively simple technology of the day, there's no reason why I couldn't build a basic version myself. The core idea behind a Vassy is pretty straightforward. You start with a light source. Part of that light passes through a red filter while the rest remains white. That creates two distinct beams out in front of the Vassy, red, which tells you you're too low, and white, which tells you you're too high. When you're on the correct glide path, you see an even split between the two. To build it, I scavenged an old Tupperware tote for the housing and used an LED light that I already had as a light source. I drilled a couple holes in the side of the tote to make mounting brackets for the light. I also removed the barn doors, which probably fell apart in my hands, but that wasn't a problem since I don't need them anyway and can reassemble in the future. For the red light, the only thing I actually had to buy was the red cellophane for the filter. I taped it to the front of the light over about a third of the panel, which turned out to be a good starting point. Because it's just tape, it's easy to fine tune and adjust the cutoff as needed. I then routed out the opening in the plastic, which effectively acts as a lens. Think of it as the opposite of a pinhole camera. Instead of focusing an image into the tote, the lens in this case focuses the light into the outside environment. As you move in the plane relative to the Vassy, the color you see changes. If you're too low, you see red. If you're on the glide slope or too high, you see white. One final tweak that I had to make was dealing with the translucent plastic. To improve contrast, I lined the inside of the tote with aluminum foil to block stray light. This made the red and white distinction much clearer. We're a little low, so it's showing red. That is really cool. I wasn't sure how this was going to work. Let's do that again. This is really cool. I've got it set up so that the white is above the trees. You can see as I get lower, but I'm below where the trees are, and you can see it's getting red. And then if I really drag it in, but I'm firmly in the red, too low. So like I was saying, I made it out of a tote and a studio light. Got a slit in the side. Uh, when I was testing it, I realized that a lot of the glow from the light could be seen through the translucent plastic of the tote. So I lined it on the inside with uh, aluminum foil. And that seems to have done the trick. Sunset was just a few minutes ago. And it's really easy to see where you are on the light path. I went down to Texas to visit my buddy Dan and be on his show, and that was a blast. It was really cool to be down there and see how the magic happens. He's got a nice setup, and uh, always fun to hang out with and fun to be on the show. Also great to talk about my YouTube stuff with people interested in this kind of thing. It was really good to get down there, see the gang, be part of all that. But it was also cool running into my new friend, Dan, who has a company that makes landing lights. 
If you want me to try out some of his stuff in the experimental mall here, which obviously I was game to do. So what we're doing tonight, I just yesterday got the second one installed. I had the first one installed for quite a while. I've gone to a couple fly-ins with it, in fact. Lone Rock traffic, one whiskey tango, left downwind, runway 18, Lone Rock. The installation of the new lights was pretty easy. The Z-Vision lights are set up to be drop-in replacements for the standard lights, but in my case I was unable to use them that way due to the space behind the light being shallow. Instead they sent me some hex bolts and washers to mount the light. This made things easy and after getting the light mounted I adjusted the aiming back to where it had been for the previous lamp. In addition to the Z-Vision lights being bright you can see the big heat sink on the back. This is coupled with a smart thermostat that runs a fan to keep the LEDs cool and making the maximum luminosity. With the light mounted, it was time to head back to the plane and mount the whole package in the wing. Couple things to know here. The Z-Vision setup comes with a plug-in connector that replaces the older ring terminals that had been installed on my plane. We clipped those off and connected the wires to the Z-Vision plug. I didn't have time to install for this video, but the system also comes with a controller that mounts inside the plane to switch the lights between modes. The company adopted some NASA research showing birds respond to certain frequencies of light pulses. By pulsing the lights, birds actively avoid the plane and reduce bird strikes as a result. As winter turns back into summer in the Midwest, I'll be installing this component and we'll post an update after I do. There's a saying in aviation that goes, aviate, navigate, communicate. The point of it is to think about the things you need to do in the order of their priority. I mention that because I usually narrate things from the flight deck, but in this one I had to abandon that plan due to task saturation associated with night flying. So in this sequence, I'm going to show you takeoffs, landings, and taxiing with the Z-Vision lights. One thing I found super interesting while editing this is how different the different cameras picked up the light. For example, the ceiling mountain light and the one mounted under the wing to my left are the same series, but pick things up very, very differently. The one on the wingtip is an older one, but for unknown reasons behaved on this night most similarly to the other one on the wing. Going from incandescent lights to LED will always be impressive in aviation, but the engineering on these is still a step above the ones I had in my old mall. And it's fair to take some time and disclose that after I got them installed and gave feedback to Z-Vision, they stepped up and became a sponsor for the channel. As the sequence continues, you'll notice it getting darker and darker. We started about 15 minutes after sunset and finished with only the last hints of color still painting the horizon. It had been a really long time since I had flown at night, so as things got darker, I had to pay ever closer attention to the changing conditions. This shot from the ground gives you a great idea how bright these lights are. The camera attempts to compensate for the brightness, but they still overload the sensor. Then, when the plane turns away, the camera adjusts and you can see how much light is being thrown across the bean field as the plane pivots around. Finally, let's wrap up with some shots from the taxi. I went out to the High Sierra flying a couple months ago and on the way back was taxiing with the new lights for the first time. I was amazed at how they lit up the FBO. So, when I was shooting this footage in Lone Rock, I wanted to taxi around a bit so you could see the visibility on the ground. As with my experience in Mississippi, it was like being in daylight. Very easy to see where I was going, and I guess the only thing I'll have to figure out is how to pull in with a marshaller, since I think the lights will make it impossible for them to see the plane. Okay, so that's all I have for you today. I have been back in the editing suite this winter and have some new stuff coming out pretty frequently going forward. Hope you'll stick around for that. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this one and watch some of the other content because that more than anything teaches youtube that you want to keep seeing this stuff see ya